Hello again, everybody, and welcome to another episode of HBCU Huddle. I am CJ Hurt. Follow me on Twitter at ConRadicalness, and I'm joined alongside, as always, by Mike Wallace. You can check him out on Twitter, my Mike Check. Mike, what's going on, man? Hey, we're at the midway point of the HBCU football season, college football season. Uh, a lot of a lot of stuff to get to, man. A lot of shoe drop information. It's, it's going to be another jam-packed show, and I'm looking forward to being part of it, brother. This show feels, as as we were building it, 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 feel, it felt very sneak fest with the amount of sneaker stuff <laughs> that we have. But we're absolutely going to show share and show, if you're watching this, uh, some some really cool HBCU sneakers that are coming out. Nike's unveiling some. Ja is unveiling some as well. We're going to talk about that. We'll also take a look at the box to row rankings for this week. We'll preview the action, including an important game for those G-men, Mike, as they take on Alabama A&M in their quest, uh, Gramlin State, to stay in that SWAC West race. We we will do all of that and more. But first, Mike, I wanted to, to start with the fact that we are on the road to the Celebration Bowl. And Davius mm-hmm. Richards and North Carolina Central, they appear to be in the driver's seat for the MEAC when you look at the standings. Even though the MEAC hasn't played a conference game yet, uh, when you look at North Carolina Central sitting there at 5-1, and one, uh, number 14 in in the, the national polls, number one or two, one I do believe in the box to row rankings. Mike, when you see that, who, uh, first off, what what type of how special is this season for North Carolina Central? And then who do you think in the MEAC can can challenge them for the top of that crown? Well, I mean, when you look at the standings right there, you know, obviously they're they're looking like a team that uh, is is on a on a on a mission to repeat and not only repeat and become HBCU two time back to back national champions, but also raise some questions as to how far this team could theoretically go. Uh, if they get invited into, you know, in, into the bigger playoff picture. I mean, they're number nine in the latest uh, FCS national coaches poll uh, for, for FCS football. Uh, that's the highest that an HBCU team has been uh, in some time since I think Jackson State peaked in the top 10 as well at a certain point. So, you know, with that win over Elon, man, North Carolina Central beat the top team in the CAA. Uh, they beat a, a, a perennial playoff type team. Um, and, and they ran, I mean, they beat Campbell, they beat, you know, uh, Elon, uh, they're killing and destroying HBCU teams. Davis Richard, uh, is on, uh, you know, right, rewriting the record books, uh, with touchdown, uh, passes and rushes, uh, for a quarterback at, at central. And they're just having a magical, magical season. We gave a lot of credit to that March that coach prime and Deion Sanders and Jackson state went on, uh, during the regular season, each of the last two years. And I feel like nationally. Uh, North Carolina Central is being overlooked, but they are putting together so far uh, one of the greatest, if not the greatest HBCU season that we've seen through six games. Um, And and it's one of those things that it can't be ignored. And uh, I'm looking forward to seeing them go forward. Now, Mm -hmm. your other part of the question, who could catch them? Who could possibly knock them off and upset them? Howard's offense. Howard has the level of offense that can score with North Carolina Central. And when you talk about Eden James, Edgerin James' son, the NFL Mm -hmm. uh, big-time prolific running back for the Indianapolis Colts, uh, his son had another monster game, uh, almost rushed for 200 yards this past week against Northwestern. Yes, the Northwestern of the Big 12, Big 10. Um, So I I think Howard is a team that can offensively keep up with them. But other than that, man, I think uh, Central is on a collision course for a repeat in the uh, uh, celebration mode. And it wasn't just that they beat. Elon, it was the the how they did it. You know, I watched that game. They were down 10 in the first quarter. It was like, oh, no, this thing is going to get away from them. And nope, Richards and Collier. Collier is having a really special season as well. He had a damn near 70-yard touchdown run, if I'm not mistaken, in that game, about 66, 67. I can't remember exactly. And just Richards, his playability, uh, whenever something needs to be done, he does it. Right, yeah. you need ten yards. He'll throw for it or he'll run for it. He'll get you the ten. You could just put the ball in his hands, and good things are going to happen to you. And I saw it. We saw it firsthand last year at the Celebration Bowl, where it was how in the hell is North Carolina Central keeping up with Jackson State? And it is oh, they got that guy at quarterback. And when you have one of those, especially at the mm-hmm. collegiate level, 
they can change trajectories of, of seasons because they are able to not just put their stamp on the, the game, not just put their stamp on a series or a play, but they can change games. He's a legitimate game changer, one of the great game changers at the, the FCS level that we have. When we take a look at the SWAC standings, it's a it's fine in the East. It, it appears to be FAMU's to lose. FAMU is in the driver's seat out East, but that West, Oh, boy, it's a wild, wild west for the swag, baby. <laughs> I, and, and you know what? That's where my Grambling State University Tigers are, are, are positioned. They took a loss to Alcorn State. And, um, you know, again, we said it before, man, never count out your guy down there on the reservation with the men's and them Kroger visits. You know what I'm saying? When they get to the Krogers you and get them Gatorades, you, can't, you can't count them out, man. And, and all corn, and, and it's it's a jumbled mess at the top of the uh, Swag West because l- listen, Grambling beat Prairie View two weeks ago mm-hmm. and lost to Allcorn. Allcorn beats Grambling that this past week, but loses to Prairie View the week before that. Both of them were decided by uh, a last minute play uh, in in both of those games. So it's sort of a round robin, and you can't count out Southern either because mm-hmm. Southern is still kind of in there. Uh, in that mix for the uh, the SWAC West. So, you know, you got three teams, four teams that are still vying for jockeying for position right there. And uh, it's going to go all the way down to probably the final week of the season like it did a year ago to see who's going to win that that division. Absolutely, absolutely. I think that, that that division, because everybody's so close. Yeah, It is yes, yes. a division of six teams. Four of those teams are right here. Are right there. Like yeah, and we got the graphic, we got the graphic right. coming. Yeah, we got the graphic um, and coming. And so up if, on that if as well, you too. can um it's going to be jumbled when you think mm-hmm. about Prairie View A M and Alcorn State and Southern and and Grambling. Like this this season could end with a potential like three, maybe even a four way tie at the top. And it is okay, now we got to go to tiebreakers and figure this thing out. These games mm-hmm. coming coming up for everybody. Uh, specifically the teams in the SWAC West, they are so very, very important. Your season and the expectations of your season can change in a moment, in a play, in a single uh, game. Because you could talk about losing a game being the difference in going to the SWAC championship game or being the fifth best team, fourth best team in your division. That's how close everything is in that division right now. When we take a look at the box to row rankings, Mike, not a whole lot of changes up at the top. You, of course, have North Carolina Central, one, followed by Fam. You at two, Benedict, three, Jackson State, four, Virginia State, Virginia Union, and Tuskegee, five, six, seven, Hampton at eight, Fort Valley State at nine, and Prairie View A&M coming in at 10. Mike, what stands out to you about these rankings? You know, when you look at that, that uh, five, six, seven, you know, Virginia State, Virginia Union, Tuskegee, uh, Benedict, you know, I mean, you talk about three, four, five, six, seven, um, you know, it's it, Division two teams right there in the mix uh, in the top eight spots. I mean, Division two teams are having strong seasons when you go, like I said, Benedict, Virginia State, Virginia Union uh, and Tuskegee. And, you know, you can throw Allen in there. Um, is having a good season. West Virginia State just took a loss. They're having another good season, too. This might be the year where, you know, um, the, the the depth and the talent uh, may be at the Division II ranks, uh, uh, and they holding their own when it comes to the Division I teams uh, that we see at the FCS level for HBCU. So that stands out this week, you know, the fact that these uh, Division II uh, SIAC and CIAA teams are still fighting so strong uh, at this point in the season. Now, what we're going to see over this next six games, a lot of conference matchups, a lot of jockeying, and those standings are going to change a little bit. Uh, but but shout out to Benedict for doing everything that they need to do to come back with another remarkable dominant season uh, as the number three team in, the, in, in HBCU poll right there. Uh, and, and Jackson State, man. Jackson State is, is has some ups and downs, but they've, they've tried to steady themselves, and they're going into a big homecoming game this weekend. So I think that their, their uh, season is still, for the most part, in front of them if they want to make a push for a playoff spot. They're not going to pro- they're probably not going to catch FAMU. That game already has been decided. Uh so FAMU barring an upset or two is going to win the SWAC East. Uh but but Jackson State still has plenty to play for and those are the things that I want to continue to see. And shout out to to coach TC Taylor and in the job that he's done at Jackson State this season so far. It is you can't say that he's winning with Coach Sanders' players because those players transferred. That's the beauty of the transfer portal. Your coach leaves, you can leave. 
And that's that's fine. That's good to me. Um, so he you can't use the excuse that sometimes we use in college football or college sports in general where, oh, he had a good season, but it was so and so's players. They couldn't go anywhere, right. so they just stayed. No, this is seventy some new dudes on the on the roster when you think about transfers and freshmen, and they're still finding ways to go out there and win football games. Are they uh, as dominant as they've been the past two seasons? No. But are they good? Yes, absolutely they are. And I think that's a testament to Coach Taylor and what the the culture is surrounding that program. It is. It is. It is. And when you talk about a team that's going to continue to be in the mix, um, you know, a team that's going to have something to say in the SWAC, both both divisions of the SWAC, you know, you really want to see them finish out strong. But they still got games against Alcorn. They still got a couple tough games as well uh, the rest of the way. And by no means is 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 anything decided for them. So, you know, I I, I want and we talked and we had him on the show at Media Day, uh, Swag Media Day. We had him on the HBCU Huddle. Um, Jackson State is just waiting on us, one of us or both of us, to get down there and bring the HBCU Huddle down to Jackson. Um, and and we keep looking for spaces into the calendar to try to yeah. do that. We'll definitely catch back up with him. But if they keep doing their thing, man, um, I would love for a situation to play out where you have one Swag team in the celebration bowl for that guarantee spot and a Jackson state, uh, maybe even hosting a home game, uh, in the, in the, uh, FCS playoffs, if they could continue to run this out and, uh, you know, play out the string and run this out with a bunch of victories. Oh yeah. And we saw that in 2021, correct. When with fam, you, uh, it yeah. was, um, Jackson state and South Carolina state in the celebration bowl. And then fam, you was in to the playoffs. We look at your rankings, Mike, uh, mm -hmm. Not as much D2 love in your rankings. You do have Benedict at three in there and Virginia State in there at five. But you have North Carolina Central one, FAMU two, Benedict three, Jackson State four, Virginia State five, Tennessee State still in there at six, Hampton at seven, Howard in that explosive offense at eight, Prairie View a and at nine, Alcorn State at ten. That's SWAC West Mike with Prairie yeah. View a and Alcorn State and throw Grambling in there as well that is jumbled who do you like coming out of that division man uh man I, I wish i could say gremlin i wish i could say my alma mater <laughs> man you know what i'm saying I, I wish i could say that but you know it's something about you know all corn is able to play with anybody they can adjust to any style right so they can they can they can get into a little bit of a shootout if you need to they can get into a defensive slug fest if you need to um you know Fred McNair has just got those guys prepared, and they're in every game. They may not win every game, but they're in every single SWAT game. You rarely see them get blown out, and I can't count them out, um, but I think in terms of the most explosive and dynamic team that I see uh, in, in the SWAC, I, I want to say Prairie View is that team uh, in terms of being able to do it. Like, if, if it's not going to be Prairie View, then, you know, I'm going to go all corn. And we'll see where it goes, where the chips fall from there. But it's just something about Southern where every time they have a chance to do something, they let it slip away from them. They had a yeah. chance. They had FAMU uh, right there in the in their grasp, and they couldn't close out that game at home. They've already lost a couple games uh, that they should have won and had a chance to really win. So they're not as opportunistic as I think they they, they ought to be. Um, Dooley's going to have to answer those questions about that. They they. You know, so, you know, when you look at them, that's that. Grambling, I just, as much as I love them, I just don't trust them. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, so, so I'm going to go with the guy I trust, and that's uh, Fred McNair and Alcorn State. I just think that they can they can put themselves in position, and particularly if they can beat Jackson State at the end of the season, um, you know, they'll be right there to do what they need to do uh, in that division. So it's still, a, it's, I, I named every single one of the four, um, but if I had to uh, have the pecking order, I would put Prairie View. Uh, up there at, at one, even though they lost to Grambling, I think Prairie View is probably the most dynamic team of that group. I, you have to mention all of them because, like we yeah. said earlier in the show, they're like neck and neck. They're so close to together. Um, picking one, I just throwing darts at a board to to me at this point. I do like Alcorn State, not just because of the the character that is Coach McNair, but because I think he's a he's a really good coach. And if you mm -hmm. said who's the who's got the coaching advantage, I, I would say Coach Mc, McNair does. And you brought it up, Mike. They can play with anybody given any sort of of style and find a way. You want to play fast? We'll make it a an Alcorn State style game, though, and you'll end up in the mud with them. Oh, you want to go slow? Well, we we'll speed you up. They they make you play at their pace, 
and that is something that is really, really hard to do, especially at this level. And uh, Coach McNair and Alcorn State, they do such a good job at it. Prayer View a and and Southern, to me, both have the the same issue of closing things out, like closing the door all the way, finishing not just drives but finishing games off. And But if you told me, hey, you know what, Southern or Prairie View a and they're going undefeated the rest of the year, I'd be like, oh, yeah, I can see that because the talent is there. The coaching is there. They just got to do that extra little bit, that little thing to, to end the game, whether it be – uh, get a first down, get a big-time stop. Whatever that small thing is they need to do, they just haven't been able to do it. You brought up Southern and Florida a and Mike, and you're right. They they had Florida a and and just let it slip through their grasp. So th- I look forward to seeing what ends up happening uh, in the SWAC West. I also look forward. Here's the thing. Here's the thing, too, CJ, real quick, man, is, is Prairie View – has the easier schedule because they've already played Grambling. They've already played Alcorn, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and, and so Grambling still has to play Southern. Uh, Grambling still has some some meaty games on their schedule. Um, you know, they play Alabama a and um, You know, Southern still has to play Grambling. Southern still has to play Alcorn. You know, Alcorn still has to play Jackson yeah. State. I yeah. think Prairie View got through the tougher part of their schedule in the first six games. And they get a little bit of an ease coming down the stretch, whereas the other three teams, they're going to be facing one another and jockeying and beating up on each other still. Wasn't it Prairie View A&M last year who had the SWAC West one and all they had to do was beat Valley? I'm I'm not getting my team. It was was Prairie View, wasn't it? Prairie View, and they let Southern slip in. And and Southern Southern slipped back in at the end. And, uh, um, yeah, Prairie View had the thing won. And then I think last year was when they got into that fight with uh, – who they fight? They got into a, was it Southern? They fought. They got into a big time brawl. They did uh, in the game. Uh, maybe it was Texas. It was somebody, but it was it was it was no. You know, I think it was. Uh, it was definitely Prairie View involved in it. So and then their season kind of unraveled after that. But they had it won, and and they just couldn't hold on. Like they they had it the last. Now it's bothering me. Now I got to pull up the the SWAC standings from last mm-hmm. year to see who finished second in the in the SWAC West because mm-hmm. I everything in me it was Prairie View. Prairie View A and M the last it was. Was it Valley? I think it was Valley. Let me double check. Now I got to pull up the daggum schedule to make sure I'm not tripping. Yeah, it was yeah, Valley, yeah. Mississippi uh-huh. Valley, who had been winless in conference. I think for two seasons, if they hadn't been winless, they may have won one or two conference games. Like they were bad in conference, and all they had to do was go out and beat that team, and they couldn't do do that. And that's my issue with Prairie View A and M is while their schedule, you're right, their schedule is easier. What does that mean? What does that matter? <laughs> they they've got to finish, and they they hadn't been good at finishing the past uh, season and a half, two years. So even though they do have the easier schedule, I just can't trust them. Maybe I'm making too much of the loss last year to lowly Mississippi Valley State, um, but I, I can't get that out of my head because you had this, you you had it right there in your hands, Mike. It was yeah, there for you yeah. to take. It was right there. It was right there. And like I said, they got into that brawl with Southern. Um, and, and they couldn't, they, they never recovered from, from either one of those incidents, man. And they, they, it was theirs. And then Southern snuck through, uh, Alcorn had a chance to get a piece of it too. Mm -hmm. They could knock off Jackson state in that last game and they couldn't do it there too. So I expect this to come down like it was before to the, to the very last, uh, part of the schedule, man. And the very last week or two, you know, going into that swag championship, uh, game, uh, before it's going to be decided, man. So that last week. You know, Thanksgiving weekend is going to be a big weekend, and then I, I, I think once that settles, then we'll see where it goes. But yeah, man, it's going to be—it's still up for grabs, and you saw that based on the standings. And kudos for for the Celebration Bowl because they're going to have a compelling game, uh, one way or another, man. And and you know, it's just going to be—it's going to be great. I think all across the board, there's—we're trending towards another year where they're going to be three, four, maybe five HBCU football programs either playing in bowl game, the Celebration Bowl. And various Division One or Division Two uh, playoff scenarios. So I think it's going to be a big, a big, big time uh, postseason for HBCU football this season too. I look forward to seeing it all played out. I also look forward to what we're going to get to on the other side. We'll be talking about some games this week. We'll give you our pick sixes for the week. We'll take a look back at how we did last week in the pick six. Plus, we've got some great sneaker news with HBCU culture just dripping. Through the, through the soles of some really cool tennis shoes. You're listening to HBCU Huddle right here on Grind City Media on the Grind City Media app. It's time. Live across 
North America, Adam Sandler. It's going to be our kind of night. Joking. One more car wheel and out. Singing. You guys want to get funky? Let's get funky together. Funkin'. I've been thinking about you. One zip. Oh, shit, man. FedEx Forum, November 16th. The I Missed You Tour. Get tickets now at LiveNation.com. Biggest off-season uh, development, what do you think? The additions of Marcus Smart and Derrick Rose, both are hugely important, I think, to this team for leadership purposes. Just the fact that you locked up Desmond Bain on, on a max contract. Hey, Grizzlies fans, be sure to tune in to Grisby, where the panel and I break down all things Grizzlies and take a look at the rest of the NBA as well. The show is live every Wednesday, 2 p.m. on YouTube at Grind City Media and the official Grind City Media app. Eight-time Grammy Award-winning, Anita Baker. Anita Baker, the songstress, live in concert. For one night only. FedEx Forum, November 22nd, 2023. Get tickets now at LiveNation.com. Don't miss your chance to see the legendary Anita Baker, live in Memphis. Everyone's favorite shoe is a friggin' Travis Scott. I feel like everyone loves these shoes. Not these ones, but there's another Travis Scott collab released or scheduled for 2024. Can you hear the excitement in my They voice? are doing uh, everything they can to, to, to build up the hype. I think the these are going to flop. This I is, think these are so ugly. Yeah. The Sneak Fest Show, live Tuesdays at 2 p.m. on YouTube at Grind City Media and the official Grind City Media app. Welcome back. Welcome back. CJ, Mike, let's take a look at last week's pick six results before we get into this week's games. Mike went three and three on the week. Uh, Mike, anything stand out to you about the, the games last week? You hit on FAMU, Benedict, and Jackson State, Hampton, Grambling State, and uh, Elon let you down. No, nope, hold up. We got Mike muted. We got Mike muted. We're going to try and figure this out. Technology, people, is beautiful. <laughs> you guys got me? Yeah, we got you, Mike. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Nah, man, I mean, I, this was my worst week since we started the season, man, that three and three, you know what I mean? And I was I was picking with my heart, you know, right there. That doing Grambling, that. We talked about know, it. man. That Grambling all corn game, you know, was a toss-up to me, but I went with my alma mater. Uh, you know, I, I was hopeful Hampton could, could continue their sort of magical run, but – Campbell wasn't going to let back-to-back -back HBCU teams beat them. So they, they lost. They took the L in overtime to Central, came back and, and, and beat Hampton. Um, and, and then Elon, man, I just felt like they were the class of the uh, the CAA. And North Carolina Central just proved that, hey, you know what? We're not just a great HBCU team. We're really, really, really good to, to possibly great uh, FCS team. And, and that was the one where they stood up, took care of business, uh, against a power, and I'm, I'm, hey, listen, man, I'm riding with Central the rest of the way, no matter what. Now, get 24 and 10 overall. We take a look at my results, and I decided to hop on the Central train Woo! because because Richards is, is <laughs> look special. At you. That's a lot of look green check you. marks, ain't it? Six That's and zero, oh, baby. Man. I don't Six think and oh. either one of us. This is the first undefeated week either one of us has had, man. So kudos to you. Go ahead. I'm, I'm gonna open the door up. I'm gonna roll the carpet <laughs> out and let you have your shine. Go ahead and roll out your your, your victory speech. Bro. No, man, listen. It, it's, it's, it's picking games, man. It, it's, you have good weeks. You have bad weeks. You just got to keep picking them. You just got to keep picking them. Um, fam, you did. Fam, you, while wow, I feel like they are significantly better than Southern, I don't think that game should have been as close as it was. Fam, you shouldn't have been down late in that game, in my, my opinion. I, I do have to tip my cap to – uh, Jeremy Musa to uh, Coach Simmons and the rest of them because they did find a way to win that game. Lesser teams, when things aren't going your way, they lose those types of games. Fam, you, this is the second time where we, we've seen them um, come out kind of flat, it feels like, and still find a way to win the game. I forget the team they came out flat against. They were actually tied at halftime, shouldn't have been tied at halftime, and then boom, they flipped the switch and took off and, and dominated the rest of the way. I think they and they were tied like 10-10 at half, ended up winning 30-10. to 10. 
Um, and this game right here is another one of those situations where for whatever reason, the game is in the mud, nothing is going FAMU's way, and they still come out victorious. Alcorn State, uh, also another quality uh, game, another quality win to me. And when they knocked off Grambling, it looked like Grambling was going to be able to submit itself comfortably atop of the SWAC West. Alcorn State saying not so fast. You, you still got to come through us. I thought that was real impressive. As we take a look at this week's games, Mike, uh, you're up first. You've got Grambling over Alabama A&M. You've got Tennessee State over Norfolk State. Howard over Harvard. Arkansas Pine Bluff over Mississippi Valley State. Benedict over Fort Valley State. And Allen over Albany State. That's a big-time upset right there. Which pick are you most confident in, Mike? Most confident. Ooh. Most conf. Ooh. Yeah, we did a confidence poll here. Man, I would have to say most confident would be Benedict over Fort Valley State. Mm-hmm. Um, just because Benedict just they they don't lose games, right? Yeah. They just don't lose. Um that's and a Thursday go, night game, also. Yeah, it's early. So I, either I'm gonna be wrong right off the bat or I'm gonna be right <laughs> right off the bat. Um I also think this Tennessee State game against Norfolk is intriguing. I love mm-hmm. the fact that they're gonna play that uh in uh Titan Stadium over there. This would be a great uh opportunity for Tennessee State to continue i think eddie george is trying to turn a corner this year they just came off of a big win uh over kennesaw state on the road and um they should have won beat ut martin the week before that so i think if you beat norfolk state now you're talking about all right we're we're turning a corner and really trying to do some special things this year so those are the two games i feel the most confident about those are the two you got howard over harvard Uh, you think that offense is going to be enough to to stop the the crimson I, you know what? It's, it's Harvard is going to be difficult to defend because of the way that they run the ball, and traditionally they have this this you know weird sort of dynamic with their. It's not quite. It's, it's a quasi option type ball mm-hmm. control thing. Um, but Howard is. I mean, if you go up to Northwestern and you play the way you played, and you're within three of beating Northwestern on the road, I think they should be able to have a breakthrough against Harvard. That's that's my hopeful game of the week right there Howard oh, it Harvard. sounds like you're picking with your heart again Mike you can't you do go. that you gotta there pick you with go. other body parts as we take a look at at my pick six for the week I got Grambling State over Alabama A&M Tennessee State over Norfolk State I have Harvard over Howard going up against Mike that way Arkansas Pine Bluff over Mississippi Valley State Benedict over Fort Valley State and I have Albany State over Allen Mike we differ on okay. two of them I want to talk some about this Pine Bluff Mississippi Valley State game new coaches both programs are trying to uh, turn a different sort of a a corner so many times we think about programs turning the corner and that's going from good to great or average to good these have been uh with the exception of maybe one season the past handful of years and that's Pine Bluff's uh COVID season these have been teams who traditionally are in the bottom or near the bottom of their their divisions new coaches both of them new staffs relatively new players they're trying to turn the corner from bad to to average and one of these teams is going to get a a conference win this week and I look forward to seeing which one I think is Pine Bluff because Pine Bluff has been close they've been they've been uh real close coach coach Hampton has we've talked to him during the or the week leading up to um Southern Heritage Classic and I, I like them. I, I like what they're they're building. I can see what they're trying to do. I, I thought that they would have beat AM, but they beat themselves up by having way too many penalties. That was one of the most penalized football games on both sides of the ball that I've seen this year. And they were on the road doing that. And it's hard to win games when you're you're that way on the road. But I think that they can run the ball well. I think that they are solid defensively, and I look forward to seeing them put it all together because they, they haven't put it all together yet. I think they can put it all together in this game and come out victorious against Mississippi Valley State. No, I, I think so, too. That's a border game right there. You know, the two teams are, are, are closely in proximity, uh, only a couple hour, hours drive between the two and those back roads of Mississippi and Arkansas. Um, and, and, you know, this is one where, listen, you, you – I know Hampton, Coach Hampton, had higher expectations and aspirations for his team this year, but you can't lose this game, right? This is the one team that you look at your schedule in in the conference and say, "Hey, we got to beat this team because if we can't beat Valley, then you know this is a a wasted year." No disrespect to Valley, they're just in a different level 
uh, when it comes to where they are and where they are ready to compete at right now. And I, and, and um, Mike, I think yeah. that Valley can say the same thing. That's why this game is on here. I think they can say yeah. something similar to that. Where, they hey, could. If we they can't could. beat them, then what's the what are we doing? We've got some serious yeah. things to figure out. Yeah, yeah. It's almost like if if it's it's almost like all, all, UAPB is saying we better beat this team. Yeah. Or we're not what we thought we were. If you're Valley, you're saying this is our opportunity to get us a swag win, right? Mm-hmm. And, and we know we're struggling, but this is our opportunity right now. Because if we can win this game, then we can feel a little bit better about some of those other L's we took. So, you know, it's 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 where they are. Both of these teams are at the bottom of the of the, of the division in the conference, but uh, intriguing game nonetheless. Yes, very much so. So those are our picks. Uh, let us know if you rock with them or if you don't. Let us know some games that you're picking. Uh, I'm on Twitter at conradical at conradicalness. Uh, that's a mouthful to say. Mike is my mic check minute M I K E. Uh, my mic check. So send it to him, send it to me, and we'll have us a, a fun, lively social media conversation. On the other side, I came in today just for this segment, just because I love these shoes so much. We're going to be talking about HBCU culture on some Nikes, man. Coming up next, you're listening to HBCU Huddle on the Grind City Media app. On the Grind City Media app. I can't talk. Slow down. On the Grind City Media app or on the uh, YouTube, Grind City Media YouTube channel. I got to figure out how to end this thing. Go to break. The most anticipated rock holiday tradition returns. Trans-Siberian Orchestra, live in concert. December 14th, FedEx Forum. Tickets on sale now at LiveNation.com. A legendary blend of rock, classical, and holiday music for the entire family. Don't miss Trans-Siberian Orchestra, live in concert. The Ghosts of Christmas Eve. I got to do sports five nights a week, live, an hour, on national TV. Be happy. Find whatever happiness, whatever your definition is, and then hold on to it for dear life. Because when it leaves, you'll look back and go, God, man, we had a great, that was one, you know, that was awesome. The Chris Vernon Show, presented by Caesars Sportsbook, live weekdays at noon on YouTube at Grind City Media and the official Grind City Media app. Mike Leaves, it's Gary Parrish. How you doing, buddy? I'm good, man. I will say this, though. I don't know what it's like in the South and specifically the Mid-South, Gary, but the Northeast has been getting just pelted with rain pretty much all summer, like now leading into the fall. I'm just, I'm, I'm tired of it being wet outside. Eventually, we're going to have to dome Earth. We're going to have to create a dome. <laughs> You're probably right. <laughs> over Earth. The Gary Parrish Show, live weekdays at 10 a.m. on YouTube at Grind City Media and the official Grind City Media app. We find out that Usher is the Super Bowl Usher. halftime act. No. Usher, my Usher. People, my people are excited about Usher. Yes, and by my people, I mean people who like Usher. Oh, You're excited about Usher? I'm excited my about people. Usher. My people. Jacob, you excited about Usher? Not really. Uh, not my people. Tune in to the Jessica Benson Show with C.J. Hurt live every weekday at 8 a.m. on YouTube at Grind City Media and the official Grind City Media app. Welcome back. HBCU Huddle, CJ Hurt, Mike Wallace. Time for our Culture Maker segment, Mike. Nike Terminator highs. Never knew anything about it. I'm not big into sneakers. Are you into sneakers, Mike? You know, if you want to talk about sneaker culture and all of those things, nah, man. um, That's not my my ministry, but I do know what I like, and uh, I'm pretty loyal to, to to the brands that I do like. Yeah, yeah. If you want more about sneaker culture, though. Yes, we got a show for you. We got a show for you. Sherm, Jerry, Adam, Kelsey, check them out. It's a great show. And also, uh, what's the name of the the show, Lang? Every Tuesday Tuesday at 2 p.m. on Grind City Media app, the YouTube channel, all of those things. Check out Sneak Fest on that. And then Lang right now is doing something with Russ Bingston, uh, prominent, prominent in the shoe game historian. Uh, They have 15 sneakers that basically uh, 15 shoes that define the NBA is is, is essentially what a podcast that they're doing. Um, So it's it's a limited edition podcast. They have a limited amount of episodes, but they're going to walk through uh, the shoes that define uh, the NBA over the course of uh, 
uh, 15 shoes, starting with the Chuck Taylors all the way to, you know, what you're going to be seeing today uh, and, and what these shoes are. Absolutely. Absolutely. And so I, I see shoes sometimes I'm like, oh, OK, that's cool. And, and, you know, I do, Mike, you know, some of you listening also know I do a show, Jessica Benson show. And we have various segments where we talk about various things. And sometimes I'll see a shoe and say, oh, OK, cool. I'll throw this shoe into the rundown because it's cool looking. And we'll just talk about it for a second and move on. And so I threw the Nike Terminator highs in there, specifically the Tuskegee colorway. It's like, all right, I'll throw the, the Tuskegee Institutes in there. That looks cool there. Just throwing some colors on there. And I didn't think anything else of it. And then my mom called me. It's like, hey, have you looked at these shoes? They're pretty cool. Like, I want a pair of these shoes. Like, mom, what are you talking about? You want a pair? And, Mike, I started looking. Oh, the details on all of these shoes. It's superb. They're Nike Terminator highs, four different types. They got Spellman, Tuskegee, Alabama A&M University, and the Slim and Husky Pizza, which honors Tennessee State. And let's start with the, the Slim and Husky Pizza, uh, Kyra, because that is – who the details are on these? Everybody, for those of you who don't know, these are them. Um, Slim and Huskies. One side of the tongue says Slim. The other side says Husky on, on the outside. You've got the tiger stri stripe sitting right there, Mike. And for those of you who don't know, Slim and Huskies, the pizza chain, was started by a group of dudes who graduated from Tennessee State. They've got Tennessee State on the insole. And that T right there, Mike, uh, Tiger Bells. And they also on the laces, they say Tiger Bell on the laces, which is a shout out and homage to that famous Tennessee State women's track team. We were at the Tennessee, we were at Tennessee State. We were at their their university, and we saw the the Olympic statue that honors all of the the Tennessee State Olympians, and there were more than a few uh, Olympic medalists from that women's side who came through Tennessee State, Mike. Yeah, and and to see the shoe, that's a that's a phenomenal shoe right there. Um, I, I love the tiger print, um, you know, on, on the outside right there. The blue hits off well. It's just perfectly designed, man. I love the slim and husky uh, on, on the on the on the on the you know the top right there. It's just and in the back, you know, it's 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 a beautiful shoe. It's a beautiful shoe. It's almost one where you you almost don't want to wear it because you just want to mm -hmm. put it in a case and then show you know show showcase it. And I think that's the case with with uh, all four of those shoes too. They throw back like I remember when that brand first. It's the 1984, and um, you know I've been around long enough to remember when Georgetown came out and Nike had their deal with John Thompson and Georgetown, and they were the first college team to get their signature shoe, and it had Hoyas on the back, the same design that you're seeing mm -hmm. right now, but they were the Georgetown gray and blue. And uh, now to see these shoes all these years later, you're talking 40 years later almost. Um, and they're still coming out and looking as fresh as ever. I'm not sure if we can get get back to it, Kyra, but the get geeked on the inside mm -hmm. of the tongue. And th this is this is the thing that I love about all of these shoes. So the inside of the Slim and Huskies uh, tongue says get geeked. And apparently I didn't know this. That's what they say for for homecoming. That's what their their uh, phrase is for homecoming. They get geeked. They, they get hyped for it. They get really excited for it. And this goes to to me to show that is they had people in the room, not just mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. sneakerheads, not just black people, but they had people of the Tennessee state culture in the room. And they said, hey, what 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 would you guys like? What's what's some inside stuff that would get the the Tennessee state alums, Tennessee state students, people in Nashville who love Tennessee state? What would what's some things that would get them uh, going and get them excited? And you'll see that theme play out with all of these shoes, including the the Spellmans. Like, they they start on the back, Thy Name We Praise. I didn't know any of this, Mike. I did not know that that was a song that they sang. sang. I didn't know anything until I saw it on the shoe. I was like, okay, if Tuskegee's is full of inside things, uh, I wonder what, what inside jokes, references, um, cultural moments are on – all of the rest of them. And so that name we changed, that's a song that they sing at Spellman. Um, a, a choice to change the world is paying honor to the women who were at Spellman in the 50s and the 60s who helped lead the, the civil uh, rights fight. That That is another song that they sing. Undaunted by the Change is on the laces. That is, I do believe, a, a, a book. Um, uh, or, excuse me, Undaunted by the Fight. I do believe that is a book that also honors those women 
who stood up against injustice and inequality during the the civil rights movement 1881 all of the shoes have the the year they were founded on them on the on the shoe mike this is another great shoe it is it is and it got well i, I think what you were searching for cj is the spirit of the shoe, spirit, the spirit yes. of the organization yes the spirit of the university um someone who was on campus or had to be a part yeah. of the campus um had to be in the room when these things were uh, had to uh designed and when they, the concept came about and you just feel it like, you you know, it's it's it. there's a meaning to it. There's a spirit to how they're designing the shoe, the color schemes, the patterns, uh, the images and, and the graphics that they're putting on them. And uh, Spellman, you know, one of the top rank, we did the rankings of the, you know, the latest uh, U.S. Always and World Report. Spellman was always up there. And, um, you know, the, that that shoe represents a lot of dignity, a lot of pride, uh, a lot of successful women who've come through that university. And those are shoes, man, that you can be proud to wear and have in your collection. So, you know, I, I don't think they had a miss at all um, on, on any of these signature shoes that they put out. No, absolutely not. Alabama A&M, I came to your office yesterday uh, because Normalite is all over this shoe. Normalite is on the laces. Normalite, I think, is on, on the tongue. It's like, okay, what is a normal light? What is going on here? And after doing some research, I found out, Normal Alabama is where Alabama A&M is. I'm mm -hmm. like, oh, it's Alabama A&M is in Huntsville. But they called that, that part used to be normal. And they used to call the, the students there because all everybody in normal was a student or a faculty member. Um, they call them normalites. It's like, oh, OK, that makes sense. You got Butch, you got Bruiser on there. I do believe throwing homage to, to the Bulldogs, Normals Hill. Alabama A&M sits on a beautiful hill. And that is Normals Hill right there. You've got uh, service is sovereignty on the inside of it. Another one where like, the the culture is coming through uh, from that campus to this shoe, Mike. It sure is, man. And I, I, it, it's beautiful. Like it, with each one that we show, I'm like, man, like I, I need to at least have a collection. You know what I mean? Um, just to be a part of it and to support Nike for doing this. And then I'm also hitting myself because – Grambling is an Adidas school, right? Oh, so I don't even that's know why. if Grambling can get, get get a part of this. I'm sure Nike can figure out a way to to, to do or it. Adidas. Uh, Adidas. This is yeah. going, oh, I would yeah. assume these shoes yeah. will be successful. Adidas come through and say, okay, well, we want to yeah. drop a, a yeah. collab. Yes, I'm, I'm a little jealous, man, but I can see rocking any one of those that we've seen so far and many, many more, man. So keep it coming. Keep it. Keep the fine, intricate details of these shoes and the design coming for sure. You have to wait on this last one, Mike, because I need a pair. My dad need a pair. My sister need a pair. My mama need a pair. My mama husband need a pair. My my brother need a pair. My wife need a pair. Like my 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 friends need pairs. Like we got to get like fifteen to twenty of these Tuskegee's. And Mike, when I saw the detail, I saw this picture first. Like, oh, okay, cool. It's a Tuskegee shoe. It's got the Tuskegee Tiger emblem on on the tongue. Yeah, that's cool. I'm not really interested in it. And then. I started looking around it, and on the back it said Tuskegee Institute. It's like, oh, okay, all right, that's cool. Knowledge, leadership, service. Wait a second, I remember that in orientation. We had to we we had to learn that in orientation right there. And on the on the outside, on the laces, on the tip of the laces, y'all don't know nothing about balling and parlaying, baby. Whether it's sunny or gray, we're gonna ball and parlay, damn it. That is our our song. That is the song that we sing to let people know we're we're having a damn party in the stands. And speaking of the stands, when you look at the insole of the shoe, you you see it. And it's like okay, cool. T U um, Nike. All right, that's cool. But if you take it out, what it forms is a picture, and the picture is the shed. So if you've mm. never been to Abbeville, you've never been to Tuskegee. This is where the students sit. It's hot as hell in Alabama. It's extra hot in Tuskegee. So you get to the games. Kickoff is like 1.30, 2 o'clock. You get to the games at 7.45, 8 o'clock to make sure you have a seat under the shed in the shade. And that is where the students sit, Mike Wallace. All oh, this takes me back, baby. Oh, I got to get me a pair. I need it. I need it. I got to get it. I got to have it. Man, yeah, you're gonna be first in line for those, man. That, that the detail of those souls right there. Like, just give me the souls. Like the souls <laughs> did it for me, man. You know what I'm saying? You can put those souls in any shoes you need. You can put those souls in some crocs and man. still make it work, man. Yeah, Nike, so just throw me the souls, man. I just want to frame them. <laughs> oh, 
Oh, that's so much wow, fun. Wow, wow. I, these beautiful, these are fun beautiful, shoes. Beautiful. These are beautiful shoes. These are, these are shoes that highlight the culture of these campuses and I think do a really good job of capturing the spirit. I don't want to speak on behalf of Spelman or Alabama A&M or of Tennessee State. I feel comfortable speaking on behalf of Tuskegee. That shoe mm -hmm. captures the spirit of that university in a way that is really, really fun. 100%. 100%. And I didn't go to either one of those four schools, and I need them, right? So it's yeah. like, I mean, you you just you can support that and get behind that because of the, uh, the, the intricate details and the care factor and the love. Um, man, why wouldn't you want those shoes? They shouldn't be, like, they shouldn't be. And, and I would love to see almost like Nike put a pop-up shop on each one of the campuses just oh, yeah. to sell those shoes, man. That would be absolutely fantastic. Just in time for Tuskegee Homecoming. Get you a pair of those. Homecoming is Saturday. Rock them. Rock them. Speaking of, of really cool shoes, Ja, uh, the Ja Ones announced new colorways, Mike. And lo and behold, there'll be a Mississippi Valley State colorway. Yeah, yeah. Big time shout out to John Morant, Grizzly superstar point guard, uh, is lending his brand, his name, and his you know creativity uh, to four different universities in the same light. They're going to have a, a colorway for the Jaw Ones uh, that are going to be dedicated first and foremost to University of Memphis, uh, which is he's a, he's a big time supporter of uh, Radford University, uh, his alma mater, Murray State uh, University, and then Mississippi Valley State University, HBCU Mississippi Valley State is gonna get its own surprise colorway. It's not among those ones you see right there, but those are the Jaws. Uh, Valley is gonna get its own surprise colorway that's allegedly dropping Halloween. And what's the connection between Ja and Valley? Well, Tanaya Morant, Ja's younger sister, is on, on basketball scholarship. She'll be a freshman this year at Mississippi Valley State University. So he wanted to make sure little sis, baby sis, had the family <laughs> signature shoe on her feet while she's going out and balling for Valley, man. So it's going to be a, a phenomenal, phenomenal uh, partnership right there. Valley is is geeked about it. Um, and and good kudos uh, to Morant family and, and, and Nike uh, for doing this and being inclusive of an HBCU, uh, Mississippi Valley State University. Great, great partnership. I'm looking forward to seeing what that colorway looks like. But you got to figure it's going to be green, uh, red, white, some kind of different combination of those three colors. Uh, but they're definitely going to be fire number one. Absolutely, absolutely. I may have to get me a pair of those also. I may, I may. <laughs> hey, your have shoe to get budget, me. man. You man, your shoe budget is already blown already, man. You got your shoe budget is gonna be out of this world when it comes to getting all these sneakers. I yes, one yes, and they're they're <laughs> dropping just in time for Christmas, yeah. and so I may have to con somebody who loves me, my mom or my <laughs> wife, into into buying me some of these because <laughs> they're so cool. Them. I love them. I do. I love that HBCUs are getting this this uh, shine and getting this chance to be in the spotlight in really cool, really positive ways. It makes me feel good. Mike, we made it to the end of another show. Thank you guys so much for following along with us. We look forward to talking to you next week. For Mike, I'm CJ. We'll see you soon.